So this is the uh, first of three videos I'm going to put together. It'll show you an overview of the new Alpha 5 video component. Uh, the first video is just going to be an overview. The second video I'll actually show you how you build uh, and all the different options associated with integrating a YouTube video. And the third I'll show you all the options and integration of HTML5 video. But in this overview let's just take a quick look of what it will do. So here we're in Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer, uh, this is not, this is V8. Uh, this does not support uh, HTML5 video. So uh, first I've got some uh, YouTube videos embedded with, where we see this uh, blue button. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. It's going to make a call back to YouTube. It will bring up uh, the YouTube video within a flash container in this case because uh, that's what's supported on this device. If we were on an iPad right now, this would be HTML5. So I'm going to go ahead and close that out. Now we'll just go grab another video just so you can see something else up there quickly. This is a nice video of Mario Andretti. And you can crank up the, you know, run high def if you want. You can go full screen. Don't forget, we, we drove together on the Steam, uh, Michael and I, for four years. Go ahead and close that session. out. So these are videos that are referenced by um, fields within these uh, different records that are stored back in a SQL backend. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and click on HTML5 video. Now in this case, Internet Explorer doesn't support HTML5. So what it's going to do is fall back to a Flash player. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. Notice what it did was it launched a Flash player. If I right click on that, you can see it's a Flash player. I had, I had specified the Flow player, uh, which has a, a certain look, and uh, that's what we've got. So I'll go ahead and play this. Once again, you can go full screen here because the player supports it. I'll go ahead and come back. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at well, what would happen if we're running in uh, in this case in Firefox because Firefox supports HTML5 video. So let's take a look at the exact same thing. So when we go ahead and click on a YouTube video. Uh, YouTube by default is going to use Flash. So in this case, this is a Flash player. So YouTube um, will always use Flash if it can, and it falls back to HTML5. Uh, I have programmed our HTML5 side to prefer HTML5 video. So, and that's an option. You can say, you know, prefer Flash or prefer HTML5. So in this case, now what we've got is a native HTML5 player that's playing inside of uh, Firefox. And the players are all implemented uh, differently. Uh, this is a native player that's in Firefox. On the iPad or on the iPhone, uh, you can launch right to the native uh, player. You can just pinch zoom and it'll go right to the native player, which is really nice. Safari, uh, um, desktop Safari will let you go full screen. Um, Firefox doesn't. Uh, Chrome does not. Chrome will just uh, play in a, in a window just like this. And you know, you can move this window around and so on. So um, that's HTML5 playing within Firefox. So that was just a quick overview of the video component and what it does. And now we'll take a look at some of the. Uh, interesting work that went on to, to make it. So why do we build a data-driven video component? Well, the, the use of video within modern web applications is exploding across the board. Over 35 hours of video is uploaded to YouTube every minute. And we're seeing the use of corporate video for promotional, educational, and training uh, it's growing at an exponential rate. All these multimedia assets that are being generated need to be categorized, indexed, and searchable. They're perfect uh, for uh, storing within uh, SQL backends, a SQL database.
And they say a picture conveys a thousand words, so a 30 second video at 24 frames per second conveys 720,000 words. And consumers expect video. Um, with the consumerization of IT, um, they expect it everywhere. But HTML5 video, which was hopefully going to solve a lot of the problems of displaying video within uh, all of our different uh, browsers, uh, has a bit of an issue. Uh, there's multiple codecs that are supported within multiple containers. Uh, so uh, making video ubiquitous across the web is a bit of a problem. Your video does need to display on all devices and in all major browsers, on the desktops, laptops, mobile phones, and tablets. Most video on the web today use, utilizes H.264 encoding, which is hosted in a flash container, which is not supported on many of the mobile devices, including the iPod, the iPhone, or the iPad. So multiple codecs are supported within browsers. Now the codecs are what's used for video compression. And the browser needs to support the codec in order to play it back. So uh, the popular ones are H.264, VP6, Sorensen Spark, Theora, and VP8. Then multiple containers are also used within the browsers. Uh, this would be FLV for Flash, MP4, uh, OGG and OGV, and WebM. So let's look at how these, uh, how the browsers support video. So on Safari and Chrome, H.264 and MP4 in a QuickTime container, or on Safari, um, QuickTime is supported with a, uh, you just have to download the, uh, the player. Uh, mobile Safari is going to support MP4 video uh, with H.264 encoding. Firefox, Opera, and Chrome support Theora encoding in an OG container. Firefox 4, Opera, and Chrome support VP8 encoding in a WebM container. And Internet Explorer 9 supports H.264 encoding in an MP4 container. Um, they've also committed to VP8 in a WebM container uh, as long as the user has the VP8 decoder installed and uh, Google is making that available. So while the HTML5 video tag is a very welcome addition to the HTML specification, the support across all browsers certainly isn't for the faint of heart. There's some work to do here to make this work across everything. So what's needed? An easy to use data driven video component that simply adapts to the required video codec and container required for the target browser. And here it is. This is the new video component from Alpha Software. So the, the uh, video component supports a YouTube flash video with an HTML5 fallback. So if you want to uh, incorporate any video on YouTube, uh, you can do that. We just need the URL. Uh, it will play within a Flash container if Flash is available. It will fall back to HTML5. The beauty of the HTML5 in, in YouTube is it's not branded at all. It's just a, a basic HTML5 player. Integrates very, very nicely on the I, uh, phone and the iPad. Uh, we also support native HTML5 video with a Flash fallback. So if the browser supports HTML5 video, we're going to disp display it. If it doesn't, we'll fall back to Flash. Or we'll support Flash video with a native HTML5 fallback. So if the browser supports Flash and native HTML5, you can say, OK, well, I want to use Flash anyway. Uh, and if Flash isn't supported, then it will fall back to HTML5. So the, the beauty of the Alpha 5 video component is, is that it intelligently adapts and supports all video codecs and containers supported within all of the major desktop and mobile browsers. So the YouTube video integration utilizes the OEmbed API, uh, which is supported by YouTube. This allows us to dynamically display any YouTube video in a container that automatically determines support for Flash H.264 or HTML5 MP4 H.264 video. And th so the video will play on all major desktop or mobile browsers. The data binding is through a simple URL, which would typically be stored as a field in a SQL database table. 
and you have full control over the container size and the aspect ratio. The HTML5 Flash Video Integration supports uh, native support for the HTML5 video tag. Uh, it's supported uh, with MP4 video is supported with H.264 encoding, our OG video container with Theora encoding, or our WebM video container with VP8 encoding. Uh, there's also a fallback to support for a flash container with H.264 encoding. And you can define a specific uh, static poster image for a fallback. Uh, data bound arguments are tied to fields which would contain URLs typically stored in a SQL table. So in this case, you've got multiple fields, multiple URLs that are going to port, uh, point to, say, MP4 or uh, OG or Web WebM or your poster. So in that case, you'd need four different uh, URLs that would be stored in your table. So there are options for HTML5 video as a preference with a flash fallback or flash video as a preference with HTML5 fallback. Or you can just say, I just only want to display HTML5 video. Uh, you also have the capability of selecting numerous flash players. So these are open source flash players. They all have different skins and different capabilities. Uh, the default option is the flow player, but you can also use the JW player or the, the uh, flash fox player. You can also control the size and the aspect ratio of the video container. And there's an autoplay option. Uh, I don't recommend using it, but it's there if you need it. So it, the use of high definition video offers an experience we could only dream about a few years ago. And the integration of HTML5 video, touch, and the native player on Apple's iPad is simply stunning, and I know all the other tablets are going to follow. They have to at least perform as well as the iPad with uh, HTML5 video. So successful video implementation across all browsers and devices is a real challenge. However, we've made it really, really easy. So that's the new Release 11 video component, which will be coming soon from Alpha Software. Thanks.